thing that we noted when the Fed put in its new framework, that framework was a structural change in the conduct of monetary policy intended to change the shape of policymaking over the course of a business cycle. And if you had put the same framework in place in the last cycle, they might not have raised rates until, say, 2018, not 2015. Mm -hmm. uh, and so this is very much a Fed that wants to run a high pressure economy that will be very lagged in the way it removes policy accommodation. And that's why even after tapering, we don't expect them to start raising rates until the third quarter of 2020. Three. That's how long they're going to wait, and that is a, a very much as you as you noted, a new Fed. Yeah. So, Jeff, I, do you, as an investor, want them to start tapering now? Are you concerned about what you're seeing with some of the sort of supply chain uh, pressures and just the the pace of growth? Do you want them to to move that timeline up? N not necessarily. I think it is all about communication. This is almost the opposite of that Fed pivot, you know, that we had earlier, where. Um, Powell basically said, we're so far away from neutral. Just don't be extreme. I think that Ellen gets it right, that we want the Fed to be measured. And after all, we're not at full employment. And we are still in transition going from stimulus-induced growth to hopefully more organic growth as people come back into the workforce. So I don't think it's time to um, you know, just really be vigilant here. I think what um, the, the market really wants to hear um, is that they're looking at the inflation data. Don't predict the data. Let's see how this does kind of shake out as we get this transitory base effect rise in inflation. Be watchful, um, but don't be behind the curve and ignore the fact that inflation is accelerating. I think this measured approach is pretty good. So speaking of inflation accelerating, it's really, really extraordinary to look at the change in market leadership, Jeff, where we've seen financials do really well this year. Some of the energy companies do really well, but technology in, in some ways has moved sideways. How would you place your bets uh, for the next six months? You know, we, we remain balanced. We think that that really is the key. And so we want a blend of both growth and value. And yesterday is just a great example. We had a wonderful day in the portfolio as we retain a fair amount of technology exposure, pockets of healthcare and consumer discretionary, and yet we also have increased some exposure to financials and energy as we've seen this rotation. But I don't think it's time to just be extreme and heroic in one direction or the other. We're gonna get chopped and volatility, and I think you wanna be balanced in some of these themes within technology. They're not going away. Earnings are not going away, and some of these stocks Non-fangs are very attractively valued. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.